Okay, that was a uh, probably a, a top five all time DJ fade. Uh, some of you may may have remembered I, I did a DJ conference in Ibiza this past weekend with uh, Skrillex, David Guetta, Diplo, a few of those cats. And uh, yeah, they say I'm getting it, so I'm I'm, I'm going to be emerging from the underground Madison scene and hit the hit the big time pretty soon. Uh, but anyway, welcome to the Scary Alvarez podcast, uh, which has lasted almost as long as it feels like the national media spends every fall trying to sell PJ Fleck as a legitimately successful Big Ten football coach. I'm of course Scary Alvarez. Uh, King of Wisconsin Badger Twitter, Wine Allen Enjoyer, Sherry Wine Destroyer, Jake's Grandpa, and Cindy's Plus One when she'll have me. And uh, we take a little bit of a break here, kind of a late spring break, and we're, we're excited to be back uh, to welcome our first Badger football guest of 2024, uh, Nizir Forkarin. Um, thanks so much for jumping on. Really appreciate it. I appreciate you for having me. Yeah, I know. I know. I can. I can tell by your face, uh, you know, and it's not, uh, you know, exclusively you. But when people come on here, it's fulfilling a lifelong childhood dream uh, to, to jump on my podcast. I, I can just, I can sense the excitement. So I, I think it's a testament to you for seeming so calm. I've been waiting for it, man. <laughs> waiting for it. Great, good, good stuff. Well, you know, we're going to get into a lot of specifics today, but, you know, just kind of as a jumping off point, uh, you know, tell my audience a little bit about yourself and your, your time with the Badgers, and we'll obviously get into a lot more specific things as we go forward today. Yeah, so my name is Nazir Forkarine. I'm from Menor, Ohio, uh, suburb of Cleveland, about 30 minutes from Cleveland. Uh, I'm going into my senior year here, my last season with the Badgers, and I'm a transfer from Grand Valley State, a Division II school in Michigan. Okay. And, and by the way, uh, you mentioned for mentor and Micah Potter, a former Badger basketball player. I'm like, do you know, do you know Micah? Yeah. I went against them. I uh, actually played basketball my junior year and he came in scrimmage the guys and everything was killing us. So I'm very familiar with him. Watched him growing up and everything. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, he had a lot to say about mentor and, and I asked him the same question. I'll, I'll ask you too. Uh, was it, was it strange growing up in Ohio as a huge Wisconsin Badger fan? <laughs> I guess you could say that, man. I guess I could say that. Ohio State and everything right there. <laughs> yeah, it worked out all right for you. Um, yeah, I know a lot of the, it's. I, I know Ohio State fans are very surprised when they find out how many of their their young ascending football stars from their own state have been kind of closet Wisconsin Badger fans their whole <laughs> life. That must be. That's good. It's good though. It's good to keep their their egos in check. All right, still enough right right in the backyard. Yeah, it's good stuff. And and uh, by the way, you know, Mike had mentioned this about uh, basketball. He he grew up in a as a, a Cleveland uh, Cavs fan. You know, LeBron James and then the rest. Uh, you, what's your basketball upbringing? Uh, I definitely, uh, definitely been a Cavs fan my entire life. I played basketball all the way up to high school and everything. Always been a LeBron fan. I'm a LeBron fan at the end of the day. But if it's not LeBron, it's Cleveland. So definitely. okay. Well, they have a pretty a pretty good young squad up there. I, I I'll betray my. Uh, my bias is I'm a, I'm a Milwaukee Buck uh, fan. Um, just a, just a massive Pat Connaughton guy. So you can, you know, obviously he's a superstar and some other guys in the team like Thanasis and, and Giannis kind of make up the rest of the, the lineup. But yeah, but I, I would, I would say this about Cleveland. We can get into some football stuff in a second, but I, I do think that assuming they can keep Donovan Mitchell in town, I, I think that team has a lot of potential for the future. They're a good young team. I think so too. I've been, I've been hoping, man. I, I thought you were going to go far this year, but I guess a couple of injuries kind of, yeah, got in, the, got in the way of that, but let's hope. Hold the bond comes back. That's it, though. I mean, that's how it works. I mean, like the Cavs. I mean, they've kind of benefited as, as the Pacers did before uh, in the playoffs this year with a lot of injuries. And it kind of, sometimes it kind of like goes with fantasy sports. It's like who's injured at the right at the right time yeah. can determine who's a champion. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, you know, this is not a big secret, but twenty twenty three didn't didn't shake out quite the way that y'all wanted it to, and that fans were hoping. I mean, there were some high points in the season, but it wasn't wasn't as great as it as it could have been. Tell my tell my audience why they should be excited not only for the twenty four season, but more generally about the the trajectory that Luke Fickle is taking this program. Yeah, so I think I think fans should just be excited just the way that I feel like the mindsets of the players changed uh, going into this season, uh, both with the transfers that came in, the young guys that came in early, and just the guys that are returning. I think uh, our mindset last year was just a little bit. I don't know. It's, it's a little bit lazy. You could just tell, like, especially as the season started to go on, guys started to, I don't know, I'm not going to say necessarily weren't bought all the way in, but I just feel like guys weren't bought in fully to the extent that we needed to be to win some of the games that we needed to win and compete to where Wisconsin is uh, usually at. So I think this season, like, we just got the right amount of the right guys with the right mindsets, and we added a lot of depth to, to each and every position. So 
I think we're very excited about. I know we're very excited about what uh, we expect out of this season. Well, that that's that sounds good and well said. And you know, besides yourself, and certainly there's a lot of buzz around. You know, your camp, your spring camp. Yeah, g- give me a player or two that that maybe Wisconsin fans are are not. I'm not saying they haven't heard of them, but that might be surprised by a, a breakout they will have this fall. A couple guys you're 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 betting on to to really kind of take that next step. Uh, yeah, I would probably say going offensively, I'll probably say Quincy Burroughs, honestly, just going against him every single day and seeing seeing the amount of improvement, improvement he's made, especially from the fall to the spring. I expect a very big season out of him. Uh, just a fast, big receiver in the boundary that can make a lot of plays for you vertically. He has great routes, everything like that. So I think that's one, per, one uh, player I definitely expect. And then defensively, I'd probably say Amari Snowden. I think I think he's made a lot of strides. Like being a young guy, I think he's made a lot of strides. Grows every single day. Um, and for a young guy, I think he's caught on very well. He's compete competes com- comes out here and competes every single day. So I'm very very sp- excited for uh, what he's gonna do this year. Yeah, and and you know as a as a veteran defensive back, what's it like seeing this group that Luke Fickle is is assembling? And it's it's continuing with the twenty five class, but you know the twenty four class. Right. I'm sorry, you oh, cut out right. Now. You you got me. Yeah, I got you now. Okay, yeah. Let me let me say it again. Um, you know what what is the mindset? You know, looking at the the defensive back room, the cornerback room specifically. What what's the what's it been like for you as a veteran? You know, re, you know, you still have, you have a lot of time left still, but as someone with relatively a large amount of experience, seeing these young kind of blue chip kids come in, some bigger kids, faster kids. Uh, I know there's been a lot of excitement around recent recruiting classes in the yeah. cornerback and, and safety room. What is that? What is that looking like to you? Oh, we're very excited about it. And it's great to see just honestly, like even though they're young and everything and maybe freshmen don't always be expected to play and everything like that right away. These guys like push the older guys like they're on our they're on our tail about everything. They're telling us when we're doing something wrong. Like I just think their mind, their mindsets are different than a lot of freshmen I've been around. Uh, at my other school and just just seeing like working out with guys like it's just it's just different here i'll say yeah and you know obviously you've probably done your research you know there are some very successful wisconsin badger seasons in the last you know however many years last three decades but i will say you know someone who's been around the program obviously a lot uh, lording over it frankly the emphasis on cornerbacks and a certain certain kind of cornerback a little bit more size and they has definitely been notable under under coach fickle Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You see, uh, over at Cincinnati, he has Sauce Gardner, uh, a couple other guys, Kobe Bryant, good products. And I think there's definitely like a lot of size in the boundary, a lot of speed in the boundary. You see, they're going down south to get a couple players. I see a lot of four stars, three, three stars, even five stars coming on visits and everything. That's that's great for the future of this program. Gotcha. And they're all five stars to me, just to let you know. <laughs> no um, doubt. No doubt. By virtue of the fact they picked Wisconsin. So, Alabama. At USC, Penn State, Oregon. Mm-hmm. Why is playing Northwestern on a soccer field 100 feet from Lake Michigan the scariest game on the schedule this season? <laughs> hey, they got us last year, so I mean, we got to treat every single day, every single game uh, like like it is a Bama, Ohio State, whatever it may be. Because you see, last year, like you said, the mindset wasn't right going into those games, the the Northwestern games, the Indiana games, and yeah, you saw the outcome of those games, games we shouldn't have lost. Yeah, this is unque- and along those lines, this is unquestionably one of the most challenging Wisconsin Badger football schedules that I can remember. I mean, I, again, going back 20, 30 years, that's not hyperbole. It's that good. I have to believe, though, as, as a competitor, that has to be exciting. You could, like, you'd rather have big time teams like Alabama and Oregon on your schedule. And no offense to some of these other teams. I mean, you said yourself, you lost some games you shouldn't have last year, but. That, that has to be exciting coming into the 24 and even the 25 schedule looking ahead. It's the same kind of thing. How, how does that change things when you have kind of a murderer's row of, of you know, blue blood type teams uh, on the schedule? Uh, I just think I just think it shows like it gives us the, the insight that we have a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity in front of us to show what type of team we are um, last year didn't go as we needed to needed it to go wanted it to go or it should have went and i think this year is an opportunity to show like what so get back to where wisconsin needs to be especially with on a uh under coach fickle so gotcha yeah again it, it, it people underestimate especially given coach fix reputation that takes a little bit of time to get your system in i think that's something for sort of kind of a casual fan yeah. needed to to sort of understand that and that doesn't mean that that 
Fick's going to come in and go 13 or 14. No, this year, I mean, who knows? You never know. I mean, you got to play the games. But I, I just think it's it's you and a lot of your your uh, teammates seem really excited about the prospect of a second year in the system versus the first year. Not that there weren't there were some some fun times last year. There was some gelling, but as you said at the outset, the cohesion of the team and the buy in uh, appears to be you know bigger, and that's obviously a prerequisite to, to winning games. No doubt about it. I, I mean, I wasn't here with the last coaching staff. I came in with Coach Fickle. So I didn't really see much from the last coaching staff, but you could definitely tell last year that we just it wasn't fully gelled as it needed to be to to get to where we wanted to be. But now I feel like everybody's bought in underneath underneath Coach Fickle. He's brought in a lot of his own guys. So I feel like I'm very excited for this season. Yeah, we'll see. And and you know, as someone who who thinks a lot of of Coach Christ, there was he did a lot of great things. I mean, so it's it's not it's he had his success and just things just for some reason and for various reasons. Uh, towards the end of his tenure, didn't didn't go the way he wanted to, I and mean, it's a it's a new it's a new world. But I know that I know Paul enough to know that he's he's wishing nothing but success for for this program. He's he just loves Badger football still. He, he's down in Texas now in Austin, uh, as as a lot of people are mm. these days. Um, so what I, the answer? I know the answer is the, the stock answer is going to be every game is important. We're going to get up for every team. But is there one game that you've circled as the one you're most excited for this fall? I would probably say Oregon this year just because of their, their receiving core. Uh, I know they have a couple of top guys that are projected to go very high in the draft, and I think those that's a big opportunity for me and the other guys in the uh, back end of our team to show to put our names on the map and just show what we can do this season. Yeah, I, I think that's a good one. That's an exciting one. And, and again, not that you know Oregon doesn't have some experience playing in dreary or rainy weather, and obviously in, in you know where they where they're from. In Eugene is not it's not like Southern California, but I, I was somewhat pleased to see that's a that's a November game, just because you know it's, you get some of that Madison weather and some of that Madison atmosphere. It seems like the fans are more amped up sometimes for those November games, especially against good opponents. Um, I, I really think that's going to be a fun one. I, I just not that I hope it's a you know freezing with snow or anything, but I just think that's going to be a real that's that's one of the ones I've circled on the schedule this year as, as uh, an exciting game and a real opportunity for this program to take a step. Oh yeah. They got to come see what uh big 10 ball is like in the camp this, this, this November. So I'm excited Absolutely. for that. <laughs> I'm also excited for Wisconsin um, having more than half the fans in, in the LA Coliseum. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's going to, it's going to shake out that way. I know if it were UCLA, we were playing, we almost certainly would. USC has a little more stable fan base, but uh, yeah. that should be an exciting game too. No, for sure. I'm definitely looking forward to that one out in Cali. I've never been to Cali, so I feel like that would be a fun experience. So you, you, a lot of people didn't know that you had a, a surgery last year that, that, you know, set you back heading into the season. And, you know, how has your prep for 2024 been different being fully healthy? Yeah, this year I've just been really focused on building my body up. Towards, la towards the end of last year, I just – I started to break down. I didn't really want to, like, tell anybody that my – uh that my, I had surgery last year. I just wanted to keep that under the radar and just only uh, the team know. So that was that's why nobody knew to the spring. But yeah, so this 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 off season, I've just been focusing on building my body up so that I can get ready for the season, so I can go all season long and just working on my speed, building my body up, getting to the weight that they want me at. So just really just building my body. Okay, I think that sounds like a good plan. Um, you and I at some point we can race. I don't want to. I don't want you to like pull a hammy or something. I run a four four four, so I'm not sure how that adds up. What your what your four what your four yard is, but uh, I can do it in four point four seconds. Hey, you might got me. It's gonna be a tight one. <laughs> I'm bragging. We can do it. I'm bragging it. again. It's what I do. Okay. Um, what's your favorite thing about Madison uh, besides losing feeling in your extremities five minutes into any walk to class in January? <laughs> uh, I'll probably say if it. If I would say my teammates, but about the city itself, I would definitely just say like the the area that it's in, the city, the city, like the setting. I would say on the right on the water and everything. It's a beautiful area. I'm definitely blessed to be here. I talk about it all the time. Yeah, Madison's great, and I say it's it's a beautiful, vibrant, wonderful place to be. What what you do with the the other eight months of the year is up to you. But no, it's it really. I moved here too. It's 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 a great place and. There's nothing quite like, and you know, you've experienced this now for the second time, quite like, you know, the union 
in late May, just as the yeah. ice is breaking. Um, and there's just so much to do. And I, I always say that I know that's a big recruiting weekend. We're not going to get any specifics, obviously, but a big recruiting weekend for the Badgers uh, this upcoming weekend. And I'm just so glad this is happening at the beginning of June and not not in November or December. It just it just kind of feels different, right? Nah, definitely. It's definitely definitely something I think that the uh, the recruiting staff can definitely sell to the to the students. I know it's so me. That's great stuff. So we do a word association game. We're we're kind of coming on the early descent here on the on the show, and I appreciate your time again. Um, we do a word association game, and I I say a name. Usually, it's the name of a person. And you say the first thing that comes to your mind. You don't have to think about it. It can be more than one word, but just kind of how it how it washes over you. Ricardo Holman. Uh, different. Okay, I'm going to ask what that means, just because I know it's one word, but I, I I'm on the show, so I get to ask. I just think he's different mindset wise. Honestly, uh, I think the way he attacks everything, the way he attacks like film and everything, the amount of hours he puts in is different than a lot of a lot of people. I uh, I think he's a workhorse. He's great. Uh, Jake Ferguson. Honestly, I know Wisconsin fans are going to be mad at me. I'm not too familiar with him. I've heard it. Is that the tight end? Yeah, I mean, I think he's better known to the world as as uh, Barry Alvarez's grandson. But, yes, he does play – he dabbles in the tight end arts. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll – you know, not kidding, but, you know, just objectively, he's he's kind of grown into the role as one of the best young tight ends in the NFL. I'm not yeah, sure how much you've watched him. Uh, I have, I have, I have, I have seen him play. I wasn't too familiar with him at Wisconsin, but I have seen him play. So I'll say a legend, a Wisconsin legend. Yeah, if you ever, not not that you you know defend tight ends much, but if you ever someday, if you're in the next level, <laughs> and you are finding yourself lining up against Jake Ferguson, phone a friend is my advice. You're gonna exactly. you're gonna want someone there to, to just just in case because he's 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 awesome. But uh, yeah, it's it's good stuff. And uh, Mike Trussell. Crazy. Oh, I like that. I'm going to explore that. Crazy. For sure. Cra- crazy in what, in what way? I just, think, I just think the attitude he brings to practice, just, just always jumping around, energetic. I just think, he, I think he's crazy at times. Well, ju- you could do worse than jumping around as a Wisconsin coach or player or fan. <laughs> right. hey, by the way, ju- jump around. Uh, apparently, the, the, new, uh, the new game that just came out, the video game, does not have jump around in it I when it has the Wisconsin that. home games. You see that? What do you think about that? I'm upset about it. Obviously, I was looking forward to that. I thought it was going to be going to be very cool just to see the jump around in the third quarter and everything on the game. I feel like that would have been a good uh, feature. Yeah. So I guess when you're playing, you can sort of like do it yourself, and it'll look like the screen is doing it. Right. That's yeah, just it's a work it's a workaround. I, I was unfair to House of Pain and its uh, incomparable uh, helmsman Everlast, thinking it might have been them holding out. But but at, the more research I did. They weren't asking that much money for the rights. It's it's the game. It's the game itself that wouldn't. I think it's two fifty k is all would have cost that jump around or inter Sandman for the Virginia Tech games. I just think that's a real shame. Yeah, they're being cheap. They could have put they could have put some money into it, make it good for the for the fans. It's been ten years since the game been out, so I thought like that would have been fun for everybody. Gotcha. And right before we're gonna finish up here, give me give me one cool story about being on the Badgers that my audience will find interesting and will not get you uh, laughs after practice. Sorry, you cut out. You cut out again. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. So, uh, I always presume that even if you're not listening through the computer system, you can just hear me, just so my voice is just kind of echoing in the in the wind. Um, a cool story about being on the Badgers that my audience will find interesting, and that you will not have to run laps for telling me after practice. Cool story. Um. I can't think of much off the top of my head. I don't think. But I, but I know that we definitely have a lot of good times with the guys, especially new guys like R.J. Delancey, uh, Quincy Burroughs, Will Paul. I know you see Will Paul and uh, R, uh, Rico and DP all the, all the time over social media and everything. Those guys are just hilarious. It's a lot of fun times with those guys. I can't I can't think of anything too specific off the top of my head, but it's a lot of fun times with those guys, especially out of like out of Tampa. I remember they're cracking jokes all the time over on the rise and everything like that in Tampa. Okay, so. so- uh, kind of latching out of that, who's the funniest guy on the team? Funniest guy on the team. See, they might get on. I'm, I, I gotta say, RJ. I gotta say, RJ, new guy. RJ DeLance. Okay. Hilarious. Every day, cracking jokes. I'm telling you. That whole group. Because Will, Will, 
Yeah, Will Will Pauling has been has been listed has been a many time nominee for that for that role, and he's he's got his reputation too. He's definitely top three. He's definitely top two, top two, top three. I gotta give it to my guy RJ though. I gotta give it to him. Okay. And who's the least funny guy on the team? <laughs> least funny. My boy <laughs> you don't have to answer. That's fine. Someone who's kind of st- let me let me rephrase it. Someone who may be in their heart of hearts, a true comedian, a true comic genius, but maybe has kind of a quiet demeanor about them and maybe has a little more business-like attitude that isn't quite as, is quite as into the jokes? Uh, let me see. I'll go with – I'll go to Vinny Anthony. Okay. He's, into, he's into jokes. I'm not going to say he's not into jokes, but I think he's quiet. But I think he's quiet and funny. I think if you get to talk to him more, I think he's very, very funny. I'll say it like that. So he's like a breakout, potential breakout comedian. I'm gonna get yeah. Vinny on the show, and we're gonna we're gonna get him out of that shell, and he's gonna be he's gonna be the uh, he's gonna show what's up. And v- Vinny is a uh, remind me that he's a wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's some good things. Awesome. Well, I, I promised I'd get you out of here in, in 20 minutes. Is approaching 22 minutes because I'm the dawn. That's what I do. I go a little over sometimes, but but uh, you know. Anything you want to say to Wisconsin Badger fans about, you know, we kind of talked a little bit about the season and stuff, but if you want to just say before we sign off here. I just want to say uh, we're, I know the team's excited for the, for the season and what we're going to do this season. I, I expect big things. Hope you guys expect big things out of us and, and all Wisconsin. Uh, it's going to be great.